Chuck, I'm back. All right. What, what, I, I, I can't wait to see what you've been thinking about now. <laughs> I know. I just I thought I, you know, we touched on this in another explainer video. Uh, and it has to do with, uh, you, you gave me the term, you know, I as an educator, if I'm teaching somebody something, I'm not going to give them all details all at once because that could be distracting. You want to work your way in step by step. Right. So there's certain, there's certain rounds of information that you bring in once a person has mastered the previous information. Basically, like you're on a need to know basis. <laughs> That's what you called That's it. You're on a and need I didn't want to, wanna, uh, like, I didn't want to agree with that right. fact, but I, that kind of what it is, yeah. isn't it? Exa well, it is. Yeah. It's just like, well, why does that happen? No, that, I'll never forget. I had a calculus tutor, my first year of calculus. Chuck, you needed a tutor. I'm very disappointed. I, I did. I needed a calculus okay. tutor. Uh, and, we went, we went to the, we got to a certain place and this is why I needed a tutor. And he told me, this is why I needed a tutor. We would get to a certain point in the equation and I would say, but why is that? And he would go, bro, that's calculus three. Just relax. <laughs> this is how it works. And, Chill your armpits. And I, <laughs> right. And I couldn't accept that. I was like, no, you got to explain Ooh. to me why that. And it, he was like. It works. So you were ready for the next round. I don't know if I was ready for the next round. I just wanted to understand why that, that you couldn't. Okay. And But anyway. Okay, so we don't know whether, had he explained the next rounds, you would have given up calculus entirely. And so that whether he was right. Exactly. Or whether you were ready for the next round and they were holding you back. It, we don't know. You know what I mean? We don't know. I, I, you know, okay. I'd like to think the latter, but it could be the former. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if he actually gave me like the most detailed explanation from Calculus 3 as to why I, this is happening? And I was just uh -huh. like, all right, that's it. I quit. Uh, <laughs> I am I'm so gonna be a done comedian. with this whole thing. I'm, a, I'm being a comedian. I can't. Exactly. <laughs> it's dick jokes for me from now on. <laughs> we, we first hit this when we asked the question, what, um, what is the path of Earth's orbit around the sun? Okay. Now, if, like I said, if you don't know anything about orbits or planets or solar systems, you're just brand new. You walked out of a cave. You've been there your whole life. I will say Earth's orbit around the sun is a circle. Okay? And because it's easy to think about a circle. You can draw it. You can you Wasn't can it drawn that it. way anyway at one point? <clears throat> oh, oh, it was uh, planetary orbits were circles through and including Copernicus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't become not circles until after Copernicus. C Copernicus' famous work that put the sun back in the middle of the solar system, all those orbits were perfect circles. Now, you know, you're a learned man. That if someone says Earth's orbit is a circle, you're going to say no. It's an ellipse. And you're going to tell me it's an ellipse, a slightly flattened circle. Right. Okay. Uh, let me tell you that Earth is like a 3% ellipse. Okay. So if I drew it, and then I, if I drew a 3% ellipse, and then I drew a more elongated ellipse, and I said, which one best uh, approximates Earth's orbit? You're probably going to point to the more elongated one. Of course. Because you heard that it's an ellipse. Also, that's the, that's the visuals that you are present it with when you look at or exactly but but i'm just saying when you but a three percent ellipse if you draw it and you at a glance it looks like a perfect circle okay, oh, okay. so so but you're right but the act you, but but wait let me just back this up for one second for my own comfort the actual orbit is indeed a three percent ellipse is that what you're saying correct oh yes. okay well that changes everything because that looks like a circle it looks like a circle <laughs> If, if you're only 3% different in one direction than the other direction, right. are you even going to notice that? Not really. That's my point. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually that. So I can draw that and draw a more elongated one. Almost everybody's going to point to the elongated one. Yeah, we know. It's showing off that they know that we're an ellipse. Right. Okay. And they'll be wrong in so doing. Okay. So. By the way, so now, I just yeah. found out that Earth's orbit is a 3% ellipse. I did not know that. Yeah. So at our closest... We are like 91 million miles from the sun. Right. And at our farthest, 93. about 94, 94 million. Wow. Yeah. That is that is very little wobble. 94 That's and very change. little yeah. movement. That's not a... Yes, yeah, 3% on 100. Yeah, it's 3 out of 100. 3 out of 100. Yeah. 100. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, otherwise, the sun would get really big in one season and really small in the other. I mean, you don't see that happening. No, you don't. Right? Okay. So now you come out of the cave and you say, okay, I got it. It's a circle. Okay. We uh, uh, Is there more? I said, yes. It's not actually a circle. Okay, it moves a little closer to the sun and a little farther away. We have a word for that. It's called an ellipse. 
and we can watch that happen, okay? So at this time of year, measure the size of the sun on the sky. I'll give them a little tool to do that. And wait six months later, and you find out it's smaller, all right? So we are closest to the sun in January and farthest from the sun in July, okay? And January is called perihelion, and July is called aphelion. There you go. All right. And people say, well, wait a minute, if we're closest to the sun in January, how can it's colder? What? What? How can what? So all that means is a temperature on Earth has nothing to do with how far away we are right. from the sun. Okay? Let me guess. I'm taking a guess here. So because the Earth sits on a tilt of 23 degrees, it's not about how close we are. It's about where the sun is hitting us on that, that tilt. Correct. And so if you tilt it towards the sun, the rays are much more direct. Wait a minute. Did you just say correct? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> That's exactly correct. Okay. Get out. So, so watch. So if you tilt towards the sun, um, as we are in January, then, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, we are in July, then the, the ground heating is much more significant. And that's, that's what takes us into summer. Meanwhile, the folks in the southern hemisphere are tilted away. Away. That's, that's why they get winter when we get summer. And I then was, it switches. I was really guessing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good guess. Chuck. I thought you were going to say, well, that makes a lot of sense, Chuck, but. Okay. Oh, yeah, that makes sense in your head. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so now they're, now they're all good with the ellipse. And I say all the planets are in ellipses. All right, okay. Some are less so than others. Pluto is particularly elliptical in the long list of weird things about it. And... Uh, Venus is particularly circular, but everybody is some form of an ellipse. Okay. okay. So now we're, we're good there. And that's how that's where most people are. That's where most people have been left. Absolutely. But there's more. Okay. Uh -oh. All right. If I act now, will I also receive? <laughs> but wait. So now watch. <laughs> so uh, Earth and the moon orbit each other. Okay. Okay, so we're not just sitting in one place with moon going around us. The moon and Earth each orbit their common center of mass. Okay. Okay? Now, obviously, the center of mass is going to be much closer to Earth because Earth has more mass. Right. And this is, even if it sounds a little weird, it's completely intuitive. If you walk up to a, a barbell and there are more weights on one side than the other, and I ask, where would you have to pick it up so that you balanced it? You have I want to pick, pick it, up, it up closer to the heavy side. Closer to the heavy side, and then you can get a balance point on that. And that's true for anything you pick up, Absolutely. Right, if you want to find the balance point. So what that means is Earth's path around the sun is not a circle. It's not an ellipse. It's a loop-de-loop. -loop. Oh, because it's doing the little merry-go-round dance just, with it's, the moon. It's doing the moon, it's doing a, it's yeah. doing the moon jiggle. Right. Okay? Oh, and by wow. the way, that's, that center of mass is a 1,000 miles beneath Earth's surface in a line connecting the center of the Earth to the center of the, center moon. Of the moon. So the Earth is not doing this. Uh, do it, do it. It's not doing this. It's like doing this. Right. The center mass is inside its own. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a black girl telling you off. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Listen to me. You better listen to me when I... I you don't know me. You don't know me. <laughs> Yes, exactly like that, Chuck. Okay. So, yes, it's basically a circle. It's also basically an ellipse, but on top of that ellipse are these loop-de-loops. Right. Okay? And not only that, okay, the path that Earth takes around the sun does not rejoin itself in the same spot. So, in other words, it's not a closed orbit. No. All right? Right. So, the point for, so for example, the point where we are closest to the sun that actually shifts every single year and migrates around the sun. It's called a precession. Oh, uh, that is so, 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 so cool. It's a, so it's a whole other level. So now I'll oh. teach you about precession and I teach you about how that works and the gravity torquing because we're not a perfect sphere where a mass is unequally distributed. Wait a minute, gravity twerks? Uh, torques. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Twerk. <laughs> So sorry, man. <laughs> that would be cool. Wouldn't it be cool? <laughs> no, no. If the moon mooned us with a twerk, that right. would be. <laughs> if the moon is twerking us. <laughs> actually, wait, Chuck. Actually, uh, actually. The moon twerk. Moon, wait, wait, wait. Actually, there's something called libration on the moon. Right. Where sometimes the moon's orbit, it's a head 
of where it would be on average. And sometimes it's behind of where it is on average. So you can see a little bit around on the other side. Right. Okay. So if you look at sort of static camera shot, video shots of the moon librating. Okay. This is us looking. But So the moon is actually doing this. Right, it's the moon back is and like, forth. It's, kind of, it's, it's doing yeah. it back and forth. So maybe you so, can call that twerking, that's the, I guess. That's moon twerking. Moon Libration twerk. is moon twerking. Moon twerk. Okay. Nice. <laughs> All right, so this is an example of if you want more and more detail, you have to keep going. Right. And it's a matter of what level of educational instruction is in progress. That, and what I, that, and, that's wrong, though, that they don't. Come on, everybody learns about orbits, and you learn about it pretty much middle school, high school, right? Yeah. That first Earth science, Earth science, Earth science. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you, and that's when you start taking them. Mm -hmm. Knowing about precession, that is so cool. I, yeah, and, and I did not know this. That it, is that is just a really you'd have the precession even without the loop de loops. Right? right. So all of these are happening like all at once, and so so the real truth is deeper and more complex and more interesting than typically whatever is taught on the first round. That's all I'm saying. And that is true for almost everything that's taught. Right. So you can, I'll give you one more example. Before Go ahead. We, we got to land this plane. So if you ask me, how wide is the sun? Ask okay. me. Okay. How me. wide is the sun? Uh, on this, it, it's 864,000 miles across. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, not quite a million miles across. All right. All right. And... That's fine. And if you look it up in a book, it'll give you that number. But wait a minute. Um, the sun is a ball of gas. Right. So where is the edge? How are you doing the edge of that? What is, how is that? What? So, well, you say, okay, well, we, you know, you take a picture and you put a thing. Okay. Well, whose edge is that? That edge that you see is the last point of light that had scattered on its way to the edge and then escaped the sun. But that's visible light. Right. Okay. Other wavelengths of light emanate from the sun at different depths. Ah. Oh. So if you took an X-ray picture of the sun, you'll get a different dimension for how big the sun is than if you take an ultraviolet or an infrared. So, so when you just say, how big is the sun? You can get an answer that satisfies most needs, but if you really want to know what's going on, you have to get into the weeds. Right. And you've got to dig in and then say, how are you defining it? And how does that vary? And how big is that difference? And there are some stars that actually pulsate. And to say, how big is the star? You have to say, well, ask when, ask me when. Where in its cycle do you want to know how big it is? Right. Most variable stars in the night sky the star, the category star calls variable because they get brighter and dimmer over uh, on a schedule, right? Uh, they get bigger and smaller. So some questions don't just have simple answers, but at but not every educator is going to tell you that at every point. Right. So now I have to ask this because you talk about variable stars, and you know we sing a nursery rhyme, "Twinkle, twinkle, little star." We also look up at times and we see stars twinkling. Do we have time for you to explain why exactly do stars twinkle? Not in this. Damn it! Video. <laughs> John, we, got it! We can put that in another one. All right. You know, I can't put the whole world we and universe right, exactly. in ten minutes here. I don't know yeah. what you what what you know what, what do you what do you want from me? <laughs> what what do you what do you do? <laughs> I I'm only one scientist. I'm, I'm just Jim. I can't I, do I can't. I can't do everything. <laughs> So the point is, um, ideas matter more than any of these details. Right. And so, yeah, it's an important idea that the sun goes, or Earth goes around the sun. And the rest are details. That's fine. And that idea gets you to other ideas. And right. it, so, But without you can, joking, let me just say this. What is so critically important about what you are saying is that when we look at the scientific method and we look at science itself... Um, what it does is it allows you to open your mind to the possibilities of change. And the rigid thinking that most people adopt and say it is either this or that. Or, who th or they think scientists have rigid thinking. Right. That, 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 that's that leads to people saying things like, I don't want to wear a mask because, quite frankly, 
the science is junk. And the reason they say it is because things have changed. We know more, so we change the way we present information based upon an increase in knowledge or an availability of more information. Correct. And so, so that's all correct. But an important difference, in most cases, there are very, there are counterexamples to this, but in most cases, the extra information is an improvement on what you previously knew. Right. It doesn't completely throw away what right. was previously learned or understood or researched. So that's why I said with the orbit around the sun, each next thing is a nuance on the previous one. Right. Right. When I say this, the Earth is doing loop de loops, you don't have to abandon the idea that it's an ellipse because the loop de loops are on an ellipse. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so, so you can keep the and keep the nested in it's like the nested Russian dolls. There's more detail, and and you can stop where you want, and you're good with that. Sweet. You got All right. it. All right, Chuck. We gotta we gotta land that plane. Okay. Well, next time we get to know why stars twinkle. Yes. <laughs> All right, Chuck, always good to have you. Always good to be here. Neil deGrasse Tyson signing off, of course, bidding you to keep looking at it.